Auto Network reports, we have some of the most knowledgeable automotive journalists out there. And if you don't believe me, just ask any one of them. Ask any one of them and they'll tell you. June is, most of the time, June is the month that a lot of people get married in. But June is also one of the most focused months for graduation, right? Graduation. So I mm -hmm. want to say hi to all the graduates, and I want to really, really say hi to and happy graduation to my granddaughter, Braley, everybody in the family that attended her graduation this past Monday in Northern Virginia wore the Team Braley t-shirts, 2017 high school graduate. So I want to say congratulations to all the graduates, whether you're elementary school, going into junior high, junior high, going into high school, high school, going into college, going to college, going into MBA, PhD, whatever. So I just want to give her a, a shout out. What do you want to talk about today? What do, oh, recalls, folks. We have some recalls this time. Looks like Chrysler, Chrysler's had an astronomical number of, of recalls. And right now, they're recalling 297,000 older minivans from 2011 to 2017 models of the Dodge Caravan. They have a wiring issue where it may short, short causing the driver's side airbag to deploy without warning. That sounds like Takata inflator situation, but they're saying it's not Takata. It's a uh, wiring issue, issue on their side. Now, I wonder if this is something that Takata can use to say, hey, it's not our inflators. <laughs> <laughs> you guys think that I, I don't think that's going to get him off the hook. <laughs> no. <Me either. laughs> hey, I'll tell you, if I was the cut, I'd use it. <laughs> I'd use it as a, if nothing else as a stalling tactic to say, "Hey, it's not me. It's you. It's not us. It's you." But anyway, that's the cut. What are you guys driving this week? Let's make this short and sweet. Frank, what are you in? Uh, well, um, I just got into a what a Chevrolet Cruze uh, RS. Basically, I think it's new that the new hatchback they put out. Uh, uh, you know, in terms of the Cruze, uh, it looks great. Uh, I don't think it's it's not as fast as it looks, but it seems to be pretty quick. Uh, has a lot of uh, how should you say creature comforts. You know, in terms of the NAS system, uh, uh, certainly OnStar. Uh, for once, they have a full power driver's seat. You know, the back actually moves under power also because uh, uh, GM's notorious, at least in my mind, of doing a power seat and a manual back. You know, because uh, they, they do that a lot on Buicks, at least, uh, you know, the smaller Buicks. But anyway, uh, you know, uh, I've only had the car a day or two. Uh, you know, it feels good. Sight lines are great. Uh, GM has quietly started, uh, how should I say, attaching side view mirrors to the body versus uh, the uh, the A pillar. And uh, believe it or not, that takes that takes away or or, or dismisses uh, a lot of uh, blind spot. You know, particularly when you you know have to look down and turn left. So so uh, you know, as I say, the jury is still out, but. Uh, my uh, initial impressions are really, really good. Uh, I had to get a, a, a haircut uh, this morning, as you can see. <laughs> <laughs> and my barber, who is who is a definitely a, a concierge uh, of uh, autos, uh, he liked it in terms of the way it looks. Anytime he gives something a thumbs up, I take a, I take note of that. But anyway, that's what I'm driving. And that was Frank Washington from About That Car TV. Let's have three things, just three things video, Mr. Russ Heaps. What, uh, I'm just curious, Frank, what kind of a discount do you get? <laughs> when, they, when you go to the barber shop, what, <laughs> you know, is it like, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I'll put it like this. Prices did go up, but not on me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, I don't have it. I personally, I certainly don't have any room to talk. But then on the other hand, I cut my own. 
So, uh, yeah. If I could, it's, I would. I don't trust well, myself with sharp instruments. You know, I when I was when I was wearing my hair longer, the day that it took me longer to rearrange it than it did to cut it was the day I started cutting it myself and and cut it short. So, uh, yeah. Um, I'm I'm currently on vacation, which is why my my background is is different than it has been. I haven't been home in uh, closing in on two weeks, so I haven't driven anything uh, in terms of a test car. Uh, uh, as as several of us did, I did get to drive the new Camry, uh, redesigned Camry last week, but we're not allowed to talk about that. That's right. Uh, and I also I also drove uh, the uh, A5 and S5. Sport back from Audi last week, but uh, to be honest with you, I don't know what the embargo was on that, so I'm not going to take a chance and talk about that. So uh, this is all you guys. This this portion's all you guys. Well, moving right along, AutoAcademics.net. Our PhD, Chris Lawrence. Chris, what are you in this this week? Uh, this week I have a 2017. Hyundai Ionic Electric Limited. So um, this is Hyundai's all new platform. Uh, it's been out for, I guess, a couple months now. Um, but uh, the, the platform, it's a hybrid, a plug-in hybrid, as well as an electric vehicle um, that, that have been launched on this one platform. And so um, it, it, it's a hatchback body style. And um, I guess the, the most notable thing for me driving this vehicle is that it um it actually has a substantial range to it uh this is one of the first vehicles that i've experienced um outside of tesla that have a, a an, ex an extensive range for for lack of better words um so whereas hyundai they have it listed as 124 miles that you can get on a charge um I've the car I'm in has been showing 130. Uh, I, I think I even saw 132 one day. So, um, so that's a significant amount of range where you can pretty much drive or at least commute wherever you would like to go during a day and um, not really have to worry too much about charging it up. Um, now, obviously, if you don't have any type of a level two fast charger at home, if you're plugging it into the, the standard wall outlet, then you will be uh, spending quite a few hours to put all that juice back into the battery. But it's nice to know that if, you, if, if your driving um, habits happen to be, say, less than 50 miles a day or so, uh, you honestly don't even need to charge it every day like some of the other vehicles that are on the market today. Um, the price is $36,835, and that's before any type of rebates or anything like that. So, um, you know, in all, it's uh, it, it's turning out to be a, a pretty decent electric vehicle there for for those who like to drive. You know, I, I had that a couple of weeks ago and, and got to talk about it, and I'll just reiterate, uh, that is a hybrid that might actually drag me over into being interested in uh in hybrids um it it really it it looks good inside and out there's nothing quirky and gimmicky about it it's comfortable it handles well it's got decent acceleration i liked it now did you have the hybrid or did you have the uh the electric car i had the hybrid okay yeah i'm in the full electric version and oh, really? um yeah and I mean, again, like you said, though, all that stuff, you know, it, it, it has a nice style to it. It's practical. You know, you can uh, with that hatchback style, you can fold the seats down and put large items back there. And, uh, you, you know, there's enough space to carry uh, four adults in, in decent comfort, five in a pinch. And again, though, that range is just the magic thing where you don't really have to worry so much. You know, you don't take one trip somewhere and all of a sudden it's like, yeesh, I've only got. 60 miles left before I <laughs> before this thing dies on me. I mean, you know, you take a trip and you come home and you're like, I still have 90 miles left before this thing dies on me, which is where most of those electric vehicles uh typically start. So, yeah, overall I've been I've been rather impressed with the range of it. Uh what's how do you pronounce that again? Ionic? 
Ionic, yes. Okay. Ionic, yeah. Because they, uh, you know, I was just going to comment uh, real quick that uh, they, they must be <clears throat> trying to, uh, how should you say, market that car because I'm scheduled to get it. Uh, what I guess uh, in mid-August, you know, the full okay. electric. Because yeah. Cause they're they're definitely trying to push it out there now. You know, again, it um it, it just recently hit the market, so um so it's a car that they definitely want to get the word out on it. Yeah, cause, and we'll see how it works. You know, because I do not have a speed charger. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, you know, be one of those things. Oh, I, I'll have to run a big extension cord down to the basement and plug it into where I plug in the dryer. <laughs> so, so, however. At the, you know, at my advanced age, when I'm in, I'm in, and I'm generally in here by you know nine o'clock, nine thirty at the latest. <clears throat> and I do have a, a, you know, there's an electrical outlet on the out on on the outside of the house. So you know, hopefully, I can just plug it in there. And generally, when I wake up in the morning, it should be fully charged. We'll see. You know, uh, none of my plans even work, but we'll see if that one does. <laughs> Okay, I'm supposed to. Are you seeing this, guys? Seeing what? Yes, I'm seeing something. I There's don't something know in the middle of the screen. Yeah, you see it. Now it's gone. Now it's gone. Now you see it. Logan now you Brody. don't. Now I see it. <laughs> and now you see it. Now you don't. <laughs> right. Okay, oh, this is the 2017 Hyundai Tucson, the night version, all-wheel drive. It's a 1.6-liter turbocharged gasoline direct-injected four-cylinder. It's 175 horsepower at 195 pound-feet of torque. Has a seven-speed automatic transmission. The exterior color is a black nor pearl. I thought nor meant black, but I guess they meant black, black pearl. The interior color is a black on black. It's 24 miles per gallon city, 28 highway, 25 miles per gallon combined. Now, all inclusive, everything you see on this thing is all inclusive in one MSRP of $30,220. So when you get the black version, looks like you get it all. One thing I can say about this, I love the design. I love the size. It's just the right size for... Uh, small crossover anyway suv at least that's what i look at it as a, a small crossover i guess some people would say it's a small suv interior space lots of interior space lots of storage space as you can see there uh, seating is very comfortable you have enough leg room in the back uh, the front design is something that uh, sets it apart as far as i'm concerned the riding handling is great. It is a, you know, it's a smaller crossover. So you, you are going to get a little, little bump every now and then. But to me, that gives you the more sporty feeling, which is what this Tucson is supposed to look like. You know, supposed, this thing looks like a sports car. So it should ride and handle like a sports car. The handling is very precise. I love these black wheels. It has all the bells and whistles. And I think they, uh, if Hyundai can get people in it in the showroom and if the salesperson can give a proper uh, test drive, they can sell a lot of these. What do you guys think? Well, I feel like uh, that, that night edition is, a, is becoming a very popular edition for all the manufacturers right now. <laughs> Everybody's doing a night or a midnight or a, 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 a dark dusk or, you know, some other type of... <laughs> <laughs> of addition, but um, I, I do think that they look nice, though. You know, it does add a little different flair to the vehicle. You know, somebody wants something that's a little, um, I don't know, I, want to I don't necessarily want to say a, a meaner look to the vehicle, but, um, you know, just a, a, a different look to, more to the vehicle. Aggressive. Yeah, more aggressive look, yeah. Yeah, I think uh, I think in terms of, of the package and the price, it's a good value. Uh, and I'm with Chris. It's man. It's it's a terrific look, uh, terrific looking vehicle. The, the that black paint, uh, black black paint uh, apparently, and the blacked out wheels. Uh, and it's just a sharp, sharp package. And uh, you know, and you can't, you simply can't dispute the value. And those are 19 inch alloy wheels, by the way. 
19 Harvick. inch. So besides the wheels and the black paint, is there anything else that comes with that night edition? Well, it doesn't on the on the uh, Monroney, it doesn't separate the options by the package, you know, like they normally do on the right hand side, they'll have the package options. This is all in one. Everything you see on here with the night edition is what you get. So it has what the ABS electronic brake force dis distribution and brake assist, uh, downhill brake control, and he'll start assist control, which is which is something you normally find on a luxury car. Those things. Uh, What's the price? I missed it. Uh, thirty thousand two hundred and twenty dollars. Maybe I maybe I didn't give it to you, Frank. Yeah, you know, at that price, uh, and with that look, you know, it uh, it's not that bad uh, in the sense of just you know, in terms of I guess affordability uh, for the kind of uh, for the kind of buyer that's going to find that attractive. Because I've got a feeling that basically uh, more more or less young males. Uh, you know, uh, would, uh, would, would, would be the target buyer for this. And it really, right. really looks good uh, because, you know, uh, we in the, uh, the automotive press have been talking a lot about Genesis. Uh, and, and Hyundai's got to do something to keep its momentum, the momentum that allowed it to spin off the Genesis, uh, the Genesis nameplate into a, a standalone brand. Right. So now, you know, they've, how should you say, they've spun that off. Now it's like uh, let's let's get some more wind in our sails so we can uh, we can get back underway. Well, I think this is a step in the right direction here. Like I said, this thing has has all the bells and whistles. The outside mirror is it's heated outside mirror. You have the fog lights, hands free, uh, lift gate, blind spot detection. Uh, push button key start and you have the you know the hands uh, keyless entry eight-way power seat all kinds and it has you don't hear about this a lot and we don't talk about it a lot but it has the yes essential stain resistant seats and oh. for those of you that don't know what yes stain resistant seats is or that's exactly what they are you can spill just about anything on these seats and I was impressed years ago when Chrysler first I mean, well, Chrysler did something similar to this. But Hyundai, I guess, took that stain resistance seats to another level. You can put, drop just about anything in the world on those seats and it'll wipe, wipe, wipe right off or with, a, or with a, just a little bit of water, you can remove it, what you, what you dropped on the seat. So the chance of staining this these seats are slim and none. So if you have dogs that you want to run around, have you know, put in the back seat, or if you have kids that are always spilling stuff in the back seat or the front seat, just wipe it away, and it's all gone. And here you see you can have you have the heel descent. You can lock all the wheels. So it's uh, like I said, it's a lot of content for this little package. So moving right along, this is how I'm supposed to be able to do this. Nothing's working today, it looks like. Here we go. We're back. Are we back? <laughs> yeah, we're you. back. <laughs> you see me? <laughs> I see you too, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving right along. In the news. I don't know whether you've gone out or had somebody to go out recently to buy an automobile or finance an automobile, but Financing loan rates are getting longer and longer and longer. I mean, they average now between 73 months and 84 months for a new car. And you can get up to five years now on a used car. Oh, the I mean, you're going to be, you're gonna be and that's why it. people are upside down. <laughs> I'm, right. You're going to be paying for that thing forever. And not only that, they're starting to see that their the loan delinquencies are starting to creep up. A couple years ago, we weren't talking about loan delinquencies, but I guess people forget that they still have to make a car payment 
after seventy three to seventy four months, saying, "Hey, I I thought I was supposed to own this thing by now." <laughs> Come to find out, no, you don't. <laughs> what, yeah, what do you guys think about what do you think about these longer car loans? It's it's a uh, it's a result of the instant gratification sort of thing that that you know we, we accuse the the millennials of that but man that started that started really with our generation i'm not talking to you chris but you know these old guys up here right. um uh mm-hmm. and because i remember my dad my dad bought a new car every other year every other year and the one he had was paid off it was two year financing and he'd buy it, pay it off, buy the next one, buy it, pay it off, buy the next one. And you had to make a down payment. Yeah. Yep. And now, you know, it's, and, and it started, I, you know, I can remember my first uh, car was a three year loan and I, I financed one for four years and I financed one for five years. Um, and so we, you know, we're just into this. When it comes to cars, we think that's perfectly fine. A car isn't a house. Anything that loses value, you know, to stretch the payments out for for six, seven years, is just not smart financially. It yeah, just it's an, isn't. It's, it's an appliance. That's right. It's a it's a washing machine that you drive around basically, yeah. and uh, you know, it's just crazy stuff. And not only that, but it also affects sales in, in terms of, of the industry. I don't know why the industry would encourage this, because people just can't afford to buy a new car in three years or four years, because they're going to be upside down until year, the end of year five or into year six somewhere on a right. seven-year note. That's just, that's, it's nuts. Well, you know, uh, uh, I remember when I was uh, at All the Most News uh, a few years ago, and Kathy Jackson and I used to talk about this all the time, where people were taking four- and five-year uh, uh, loans out. And as you say, now it's it was six- and seven-year loans. And, and, and uh, you know, in accentuating what, what Chris said is that basically uh, – you were pretty much upside down on a car after a couple of years, you know, in terms of, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't worth what you owed on it. Uh, and that's just getting worse and worse and worse. And the point of it is, is it's basically, it's perpetual debt is what it is. You know, because you have more and more people who uh, are in debt. And then, you know, what happens, I think, is that uh, uh, the, the public gets used to being in debt you know the goal is not the goal uh, i think in in these situations is not to pay the car off the goal is to make the monthly note you know as long as you make the monthly note you can drive uh so 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 it's it, 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 it's a whole change of attitude if you will because you know after six or seven years you're not going to pay the car off heck you may even trade it in after you know after four years so that's more debt piling on piled on to the new debt <laughs> so right you know, you it's, it's, new debt got, old debt yeah, it's, Go ahead, gotten to be, it's gotten to be where it's a no-win situation because if oh, you definitely. don't if you don't have debt you're penalized you know for not having credit <laughs> if you do have debt most of the time especially with cars the payments have gotten to be outrageous because people want to get into a car for the least amount of out-of-pocket money and so you're going to be penalized there and, and you, you know, you miss a couple of car payments. Now they're going to come and take your car. But one thing I can say about the industry and auto dealers, they're trying to encourage people to make larger down payments. Now, I don't know how that's going to fly in the marketplace, but they're trying to get people to make more down payments. I, you know, we can always say in the old days, if you didn't make a down payment, you didn't drive the car because they wouldn't make they wouldn't make the loan. It was just that simple. <laughs> you know? So you knew that and you started saving money 
to, uh, and they would tell you how much you had to put down. At a minimum, you had to put down X amount of dollars or you didn't get the loan. But now lenders have changed. They've gotten soft. Uh, the car companies have been, you know, the, the dealers have been able to kind of work the lender, so to speak, by enticing them with more business that they're going along with this uh, situation of no money down or little to no money down. And I've always said, lease a car. Yeah, you have to talk about excess wear and tear and the extra mileage. Take care of your doggone car. If you own it anyway, you should be taking care of it. I mean. You shouldn't just trash it. And you know, you know how long you're going to miles pay it, how long you're going to, you know, how far rather you're going to drive the car most of the time. Just look at the last two or three cars you own. What was on the odometer, total mileage. That'd give you a good idea. Pay for the excess mileage and enjoy driving what you want. And most of the time you can get it at a reasonable payment because there, there are a lot of uh, lease programs that you can get into that don't cost you as much money as a tra as a traditional loan. And Frank's right. I mean, a lot of these people they 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 jump out of whatever current car they have, wanting to get into uh, that next vehicle, and then carry over that old loan, that old debt, into the new vehicle. Right. And so it's like literally within months they're upside down in the new vehicle because they carried over so much debt from the old one so many thousands of dollars and it just uh it it just doesn't make any sense you know instead of no matter what the situation is you know they instead of riding it out and saying okay you know what the car still functions it's still good let me ride it out get it paid off before i jump into that next uh vehicle you know maybe the last transaction was bad, made a mistake, what have you. Let's ride it out and and get it taken care of, get it get it wiped off my books before I go into the next thing, but they just want to get out. And they don't realize that that debt doesn't go anywhere. They just carry it into the next uh the the next loan and um now they're in a worse situation than technically what they left. And uh you know, it gets to the point where they they find themselves making repairs on a car, they're still making a, a new car payment on, you know? So it's like they're and, getting hit on both ends of the car. Yeah, and in yep. some cases, they have to park the car because some of these repairs that are going to pop up, and most of the time you get hit with them after the warranty period of the car are expensive. So you can't even make the repair on the car and and you're still making a payment on something that you can't drive. So I've seen that in, in, in a number of instances, even back when I sold cars in the ancient days. The other, the other issue, the, or another, not the other issue, but another issue is that, um, and, and I know we all, we all only were kind of are concerned about getting in a car and driving it right now, but when you've got a car that you're upside down in and you go and trade that in and you roll over what you owe into the next into the next uh, loan, you know that's that's a lot easier to do when when uh, your interest rate is two and a half or three percent or three and a half percent. That ain't going to go on forever. The car that you the car that you buy today and roll over what you owe in your old car into that thing, uh, you know, uh, five six years from now. You may be it may be up to four and a half, five, five and a half percent interest because interest rates aren't going to stay this low forever. Right. We've gotten kind of used to them because they've been this way now for for going on ten years, but it ain't going to be that way forever. Well, to give you an update on Takata airbags and inflators in the United States, the sixty five percent of the forty six point two million recalled Takata airbag inflators. That's in the U.S. alone have not been fixed. That's a lot of cars out there with <laughs> with bad, with potentially bad airbags that, as we know, can easily cause. Uh, they can deploy automatically and cause some serious accident. We're talking about insurance. Russ and I in the green room talking about possibly getting an insurance person or expert on the show to talk about insurances and it's interesting uh the insurance companies especially AAA, have raised the rates on tesla 
And they're doing that because their average claim is higher than other models in their same uh, product line. And I'm sure it has a lot to do with all the technology that's packed into a Tesla. It's going to get to the point with all the technology in cars. And we were talking about what was a car earlier. To me, a car has now gotten to be a computer that happens to be on wheels and can carry you around. <laughs> so it's going to get to the point when you have an accident, it's going to be cheaper to tote for the insurance company just to total the car. Because the, trying to yeah. repair it is going to be more expensive. Go ahead, Russ. I, I was just going to say the, the uh, now Tesla is arguing that point with, with AAA's insurance arm. And I think, I want to I want to say it's called AAA, the auto group or something is what that insurance is actually called. But uh, Tesla is, uh, of course, objecting to that, uh, objecting to the AAA findings. But it is what it is, and uh, it's just to me it's just another aspect of Tesla's that people are not being realistic about, and that that are. Uh, somehow keeping this this i won't call it a ponzi scheme exactly but keeping this thing rolling um uh, and and the u.s pumping money into it and people buying the shares for whatever it is now 400 bucks a share what, whatever they've they've got that run up to and the company has never made a nickel never made a nickel profit doesn't look like they will in anywhere in the near future and uh, and now you know they're taking this insurance hit from at least one insurance company, and I think some other insurance companies are probably going to take a closer look. We'll see. Yeah, it, it's getting interesting with autonomous, and now I guess mobility seems those are the two most popular terms you hear about when you're talking about automobiles and insuring them or repairing them. Those companies now have to take into consideration you're looking at a different animal. It's not like like the old traditional cars. Speaking of traditional cars, remember when the Lincoln Continental used to be the hottest thing out there with all the new fabrics with the special signature edition and all that good looking stuff? Well, Rob reports has, has rated the 2017 Lincoln Continental as the best of the best. In luxury sedan, I don't you think so. Believe everything you read. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't Frank. I, <laughs> and for those of you who don't know what the Rob report is, you have to be in the what income level of five hundred thousand dollars or better, or somewhere around there, for even yeah. a, a subscription to the yeah, Rob the, report. Uh, the top two or three percent, <laughs> something somewhere around there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, so. Now, I, I will agree to the point that uh, I was thoroughly impressed by the Continental the week that I, the week that I spent in one. And, I mean, it is, uh, it's by far the best Lincoln I've been in in 10 years, I agree. Uh, maybe even longer than that. Uh, is it the best of the best luxury cars on the road? Whew, boy, oh, boy, I, I, I might take issue with that. <laughs> Mike, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I have say. not been in it, uh, so so I I, you know, I can't say from personal experience, but you know just the just the sentence, like <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, when you get your hands on, you see it. It the new one is very impressive, and Toyota has again been ranked as the world's what most valuable car brand in the world worth what 28.7 billion the big b well What's they're running on they're running on all all cylinders i mean <laughs> toyota's just something else <laughs> what is that? i just there's... i just want to mention chris chris you're muted i know you tried to jump in there oh did he all right here we go <laughs> <laughs> see i um uh, i i'm actually currently editing my review of the continental now and uh you know i i 
I have to say, it did impress me way more than I was expecting to be impressed. I will, I will put that out there. Um, you know, I, I was expecting a town car. And and uh, and it's not a town car. It honestly is um, a nice vehicle, and uh, you know I'll, I'll save all the details for for later on once I, I post my my review. But um, a, as a younger person looking at you know the, these luxury cars coming out here today, I mean again, it's questionable what the Rob report is reporting. But um, but from my own personal experience, I I was pleasantly surprised with the uh the new lincoln continental okay that's 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 the classic case of when you have low expectations you know and some where the bar is that you know, low something, <laughs> something yeah something uh kind of rises above those expectations then it multiplies again and goes even higher uh you know uh, as I say, I haven't been in one car. Looks great, uh, you know. Uh, uh, and 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 well, the, you know, how should I say? Ford had a, because let's you know, Lincoln is is Ford. Uh, basically, how should you say? This is not uh, fresh creativism, you know. Basically, it's a Jaguar. Let's let's you know, in terms of its look, uh, you know, they got the grill and so on and so forth. Uh, from Jack, uh, and 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 uh, they've done a nice job uh, with it. But you know, as I say, uh, and you be you know, the American driving public is gullible. You know, if somebody says it's the best, <laughs> it's the best car out there. Somebody's going to believe it, and it, it makes me wonder. Who That's a good thing, Frank. We'd be out of a job. Yeah, this right. Is <laughs> <laughs> this is true. But you know, who got the who? Because you know, for, for those of us who are in this business, the statement just doesn't make sense. It, it may be a good car, but that statement just doesn't make sense. All right. Does, does this one make sense? Every year, the Southern Automotive Media Association has what they call the, what is it, Topless in Miami event. And this year, the winner was the 2017 Fiat 124 Spider Abarth. I get, is that is that a true statement? I, I like the car. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, that yeah, was another I, one that impressed me that I wasn't expected to be impressed by. Um, but that that was based on small convertibles. Let me let me throw that in there. So it's not like top of the line convertibles, but small convertibles. Well, it's really who do you who do you have in that category? Yeah. You've got Miata. Volkswagen. Which is, you know, which the 124 is based off of. And what? I take the Volkswagen you know, convertible. Well, Volkswagen. yeah, it, you know, it might have been in there too, but I would still put put the uh, 124 over top the, the VW. You would? Um, okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But, you know, that's me. But anyway, yeah, I was going to say they have... As, as a lot of these uh, competitive things go, they have maybe five or six categories. And, and the program is so short that, uh, oh, let, me, let me make sure I'm accurate here, because I've, I've done that program a couple of times, um, that you are assigned, you, the, the group is split in half, and half drives certain cars and votes on them, and the other half drives other cars and votes on them. So it's kind of a um, kind of a crazy, you know. Uh, I'm sure it's all scored fine, but uh, yeah, it's it's kind of a different different than most of these things that we're used to. But they do have several categories. I'm sure of which that was just was just one because they've got some they've got some pretty nice uh, convertibles, Mercedes and. So right. forth and so on that, that show up at like, that thing. Like I said, this was small car convertible. Since we're going to talk about award, let's just keep it rolling. As you know, Auto Pacifica came out with its, uh, what do they call it? New Vehicle Satisfaction Award. And they have a long list of cars. But the overall winner was the 2017 Genesis G90. It was their top vehicle. You guys think that would be the top vehicle haven't driven it 
either. I've driven it. Uh, it's it's a really nice car, but you know I don't like cars of that size anyway. I don't care what it would be, the Genesis, or Mercedes, uh, a Audi A8. Uh, I just don't like anything that big. Uh, but it's uh, you know, but as I say, I've driven it. It's a very very nice car. It really is. And that award is based on owner satisfaction. I I don't think it's been out long enough. For them to get true owner satisfaction uh, for the G90. I would think you'd have to have a car that's been out there three, four, five years maybe to get true customer satisfaction. Well, if that's... When you're getting, when, when you're getting your final years of your payment. <laughs> <laughs> you mean like year eight? Yeah, exactly. Um, the... <laughs> You know, I think when you get in now, I ha I have driven the uh, the lesser version of that car, which is the sixty, I think maybe, um, and which I was very impressed with. But you know, that's a that's a I don't I can't remember whether whether that uh, particular rating is is like figure skating where you're you know it's points for style and kind of thing, or whether it's um, uh, like the stuff that Power does, that's problems per one hundred vehicles. No, they have or, a whole. You know, they have a whole list of criteria that you that you check off on. But but I could see I could see if it was customer satisfaction from the point of view of the amount of car you get and the features and the comfort and all of that. I could see that. If that's a that's a tough. That's a great value story, and it, and it would be a tough one to. To compete against, uh, but if uh, you, you're right, if it's something that has to do with 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 uh, problems and issues and those sorts of things, um, a little longer might be better in terms of judging that. Right. Well, Edmund's list of the ten best family cars for 2017, and along with Parents Magazine gave the best minivan award to the 2017 Chrysler Pacifica. Now, that one I would wholeheartedly agree with. Me too. <laughs> right. Yeah, you know. Oh, Russ darted out for a minute, but anyway. Oh, there he is. Ah. Yeah, that, I'm, that I'm here. Was, Russ, I was I, saying, oh, did you hear it? Yeah, I hear it. I just, my, I turned my video off for a oh, second okay. while I rearranged myself out here on the sun porch in uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico, where it's about 99 degrees. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. I can see where you're baking there. You put any sauce on you yet? <laughs> you're turning red. You're turning red. Thank, thank God I haven't taken a shower yet today. Um, uh, I would have to agree that, that the Pacifica earned that and deserves that 100%. I have not... Uh, I have yet to drive the redesigned uh, Honda Odyssey, um, and perhaps that uh, has taken a, another leap forward. I don't know. But in terms of, of everything that was available to drive a month ago, I'm, I believe that 100%. <clears throat> it's Pacifica. Well, if you have one of these entertainment systems and you have a subscription to participate in Epics or or pay TV type program, and let's say you're in that Pacifica, or, well, not the Pacifica, but Honda, the Odyssey you're talking about, you can now stream, listen to this, 2,000 movies, <laughs> including James Bond and Star Trek, to the 2018 Odyssey. To their rear seat entertainment system. <laughs> Two thousand <laughs> movies. That's that's part of you get that you get that when you buy it or you have to belong to Netflix or something. They, no, you, you have to belong to either Epix or one of the pay T V provider programs. You know, oh, well. Netflix Netflix may be one of the pay T V provider. I'm okay. not I'm not sure. Well can't you do that anyway? And you must not be able to do that because I don't think Epix I think Epics must have the largest database of movies because they're talking about two thousand. So, and some yeah, of but I mean, you can you can always if you've got if you've got uh, uh, a Bluetooth hookup and 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 a Wi-Fi hookup, you've always been able to stream movies, haven't you? 
Or am I yeah. wrong? I don't know. I've never used a rear seat entertainment system, so. Yeah, you've always been able to stream movies, but like I said, with this partnership, I think they have the, the largest selection of movies th through one program, which would be Epics. Uh, that's what they're trying to, I guess, position this as. But like you said, if you have Wi-Fi in a car and you can, you can have access to the Internet, you can stream an endless number, num number of movies as long as you maintain the connection. So. There's been a promotion. How long? Which one of you has driven a Bentley later? Lately, come on, later. But Not Bentley, <laughs> ben, Bentley <laughs> stole Mike Rocco from Nissan, and he's in a new position just created just for him. This guy must be tough. He's now the VP of Sales and Operations for Bentley, and they made that position just for him. So. In the past, does that mean Bentley didn't have a sales and operation person? They just relied on word of mouth? Bentley sold themselves. <laughs> yeah, to sell Bentley. <laughs> Which is so, probably why they only sold six cars a month. I don't know. So now we know that cars don't sell themselves. <laughs> Not even Bentleys. <laughs> Not even Bentleys. <laughs> So they need they need to sell six more. So they hired this VP of sales and operations to to get to that next level. <laughs> well, if anybody from Bentley is listening, I'd be very happy to help them. They yes. can send one to my <laughs> right. uh, my doorstep, and uh, I will gladly drive it all week and and, and give a wonderful review. Yeah, we, we can <laughs> we can reason. give we can give great text reviews, video reviews, combination thereof. Just contact I, one I, of us. <laughs> I can I can tell you how you can look at one, and that's to fly down to South Florida and oh, go to yeah. the Prestige Warehouse. And he's got you know, there's a warehouse full of them there. But okay. but driving one is a different ball game. I I have to go along with with this next one here. GM's uh, GMC's is has this ad campaign called Like a Pro. And they're taking regular customers who, you know, stepped up their game, so so to speak, to uh, reach some of the highest standards in their professions. And I like the way that they're doing this because they're taking individuals of different ethnic groups talking about what they have done to get to the level that, that they're currently at. And GMC is playing upon that, saying that they build some of the most demanding vehicles and they're built to a higher standard. So, have you guys seen that any of those commercials? I think they have about forty of them that are running across the country it? now. Is that the commercial with uh, who am I thinking? Steph Curry and uh, uh, I forgot the tennis player. No, Sorry. I don't. I don't think they're using. I don't. I don't think they're using celebrities. Oh, I think, okay. I think they're using regular customers that have stepped their game uh -huh. up, so to speak, to uh, reach a like I said, a higher level in their profession or what they're doing. It would be interesting to see, you know, the, uh, I forget the guy's name, but uh, the guy from uh, uh, the guy from the company that rates commercials. Uh, oh, Brian. That, that sometimes, yeah, Brian, that sometimes appears on the show. Because basically, uh, what one of the things that uh, sticks in my mind uh, is that the commercials that do the best in their particular survey are those that basically show attributes of the vehicle not somebody talking about attributes the right. actual attributes of the vehicle in terms of you know stopping automatically swerving out of the way this sort of thing that's the you know and so i would be interested to see just you know how well these do because you know it's a thing of first of all they say it's customers how do you know <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> how do you know you know, You're so jaded, Frank. And, You're so and, jaded. Yeah. Don't you believe well, yeah. anything you hear? Read. And, and then here's Jim. Here's uh, that was it, Jim. Uh, Jim C. Saying, "Oh, we've got these customers that are going to tell you all these great things about the car." Really? You know? Come on. Yeah. Who? Come on. You know, so it'd be different. It'd be more realistic if you have a customer and say, "I think this is a piece of junk." They're not going to put that customer customer <laughs> on. That's not defeats the purpose. So it's like. That's where we come I'd in. I'd love to see how the commercial <laughs> does, you know, in terms of survey, what the, what the buying public's reaction is to it. That's all I'm saying. 
Okay. I'm ha- I, have to, as a matter of fact, <laughs> I need to I need to get back with Brian to see because we haven't had him on in quite a while now to see what uh how the commercials are doing in the marketplace. Frank, you mentioned some, something interesting talking about the car stopping as a as a stand as a feature and Nissan in 2018 is going to offer as a standard feature, the automatic emergency braking system, which I think is a great system. And if I'm not mistaken, NHTSA is trying to get all of the manufacturers to go to a an automatic braking system. I think they did something like that with rear view cameras, if I'm not mistaken. But an automatic braking system is a good thing, and it's also a scary thing, especially if you've never experienced it before. And what that takes into consideration is using a radar in the front of the car to determine your distance between the car that's in front of you. And it really takes into consideration your speed and the closing distance between you and the car in front of you. So if the system indicates that you're not starting to brake fast enough, it will automatically start braking. And if it's with, and it'll have chimes and all kinds of bells and whistles to get your attention, including a visual on the dash, to get you to react, meaning to start braking. If you don't start braking, it'll start braking for you. And, and, and in some cases, the cars will actually come to a full to a full stop or complete stop. Now, I think that's one of the better systems. Even I think that's even better than the rear view cameras. Comment, I, yeah. I would agree with that, and uh, uh, I just I just did a story on that uh, for Auto Trader, and in that I called Nissan up and talked to him a little bit about the system, and and it is one of those systems that will, um, depending on your speed, will bring the vehicle to a complete stop if you just don't react to it at all. At other speeds, it won't. So it's one of those things that that um, you're not guaranteed that the thing will stop you completely if if you're not alert to it but it's you know good for for nissan it, it will involve about a million uh 2018 cars uh it doesn't include anything with a manual transmission and it doesn't include anything with uh nismo that that uh has the nismo tag on it but pretty much everything else it, it's going to take care of and i you know kudos to them i think it's a great idea yeah you know, I, I agree I think- on top of that, you know, when you, you say you, you would like to see the government do it, if the government doesn't do it, competition will. You know, because right. now that Nissan's done it, uh, because this is not a driving impression. But one of the things that caught my ear about the uh, 2018 Toyota Camry is that it will automatically stop. Uh, in terms of its cross-traffic alert, that system will stop the car if you don't. Right. <laughs> oh, we're 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 all going to hell. We're in trouble. <laughs> no, we're you in know, trouble. Basically, like, nobody's going anywhere because they said <laughs> driving impressions. That's exactly what they said, you're, and that's not right. You're right. That's I, I think you're moving right, move, 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 right along. Move, uh, it's <laughs> you found a loophole in the embargo, Frank. Right. That's not a that, that's not a new tech though. Like like Infinity, they I believe they were one of the first ones to to. Uh, I, I guess I uh, have that rear cross traffic and the braking evolved at the same time with that when the JX first came out. Now the QX60, I forget. But um, so, you know, that's it. it that's a good technology. I, I, I definitely agree that the, 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 the emergency braking, the rear cross traffic alert, that stuff is it, it can be very invaluable uh when it works you know when it happens like it's one of those things you don't think about it until it beeps at you and you're like oh wow i didn't realize you know that car was coming back there right. so i i i think that you know between the two of those that's a th- those are nice moves nissan is is on the right path with uh that emergency braking i, I would like to talk about car companies that are doing something good in the community and fcca for the third annual time they have what they call the big bike and book giveaway it's a program in detroit where they have partnered with a couple of the school systems and they look at students that have, that have a improved in attendance behavior and course performance and these are elementary and middle school students and they've 
they select 150 of them, and the 150 get new bikes. Whoa, that was a wasp in here trying to sting me, guys. Did you see that on camera? <laughs> oh, my God. Roosevelt's gone crazy. <laughs> I didn't see a thing. Did I, you see that reaction? I, I, but, I, I saw it, Roosevelt, but, but that, that was uh, – you, you were on it. You were on that. That wasp has no chance with you in that. Hey. <laughs> I thought it was a bat. <laughs> It might look that big, but that was a big one. But anyway, they're giving away new bicycles, helmets, and children's books. And it's, the, the event is held annually at the Emanuel Lutheran Church. And that's 150 students. So I really applaud FCA for doing that. And like I said, it's, it's uh, in Detroit. Two more quick things before we end the show. Honda is introducing the first ever in the United States, the Civic Type R. I haven't even seen it. Starts at $33,900. It's the 306 horsepower at 295 pound-feet of torque. Has a two-liter turbocharged engine, and it claims to be the world's fastest production front-wheel drive car come to America. Well, in the world, really. Gets 22 miles per gallon city, 28 highway, 25 com combined. And you've heard it here first. It goes on sale today. This was something that they put out yesterday. <laughs> so, now, you tell me we aren't up to date on what's happening in the news. Also, as a first in the United States, Toyota is launching the first ever CHR, which stands for Coupe. High Rider, whatever that means. Looks like they just came up with some terms to match the CHR. It means small crossover vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. And it's a subcompact SUV crossover. Now, wait a minute. I thought sub I thought compact, subcompact were categories. I thought SUV was a category, and I thought a crossover was a category. Now, you mean to tell me this car is? It meets all the, cat all the qualifications for those categories. <laughs> but plus, it's designed. It's it's styled like a space shuttle, so it's got that going for it too. I mean, <laughs> I don't understand what these car companies are trying to do to sell more cars. I guess it's based on keep the customer completely confused as to what what we're trying to get them to buy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? You laugh, but that, <laughs> uh, it, it's worked in the dealership for many years. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, am I am I mistaken about these categories? Isn't there an SUV category, a crossover category, a compact category, and now this one car is in all the categories, and the car doesn't change. It's the same car. Well, the company you know, fit in all the these categories. So you have the it's, small size, and then you have the the, <laughs> the the type of vehicle, which is the the crossover SUV. And it's it, just like I said, it's it's a small crossover vehicle. <laughs> crossovers crossovers are so wildly popular right now that car makers will turn themselves into pretzels <laughs> to call a vehicle a crossover. Yeah, but, but what is a crossover? I mean. <laughs> It's, I don't it's know. basically a car. It's a car-based SUV. Mm -hmm. It's so this car has very, a car-based SUV. <laughs> yeah, there are very few pure SUVs left, and those are yeah. truck-based. Yeah, you know, where you've got body on frame. Body on Everything frame. Everything else is like a car. The crossovers are like cars, <clears throat> and it sits high. So <laughs> that's one. It doesn't sit high. It sits higher, higher than uh, a compact sedan does. Yeah, oh. it sits higher than the car it was based on. <laughs> <laughs> well, does it sit higher than the new Jaguar luxury wagon, the XF Sport Brake, that's coming to the U.S. seventy-one thousand four hundred forty-five dollars? That includes destination. I like that. Now, this one has a panoramic view that operates by hand gesture. So, if I want to say whoop, whoop, or snap, snap. 
Uh, how, how would you go? How would you go again, Roosevelt? Snap! Snap! All right. <laughs> <laughs> it's operated by. It has a 380 horsepower V6, eight-speed automatic transmission, zero to 60 in 5.3 seconds. Top speed is electronically capped at 121 miles per hour. And I'm sure they're talking about speed and all of this because this is a wagon. And you know how in the past, wagons did not sell very well. So that's the 121, that 121 mile an hour cap is a weird number. Yeah. That's just, you know, I, I thought you were going to say 155 since that's, you know, the typical okay. European standard. But 121 is a strange one. Okay, last one. BMW is introducing the 6 Series Gran Turismo. It's a five-door $70,695, including destination. 3.0 liter six-cylinder, 335 horsepower at 332 pound-feet of torque, and it gets 0 to 60 in 5.1 seconds. So you can get a wagon that is close to the speed of a 6 Series Gran Turismo BMW. And on that Wagon. note, I want to thank all <laughs> of you for taking the time to join us on Auto Network Reports Live. We are live on Facebook. I will also download and upload to YouTube. As always, please buckle up, don't drink and drive. Buckle up, don't text and drive. And congratulations to all the 2017 graduates. Adios. Take care, guys. Yep. Thanks. See you later.